The U.S. trade war on China has reduced U.S. economic growth and employment rather than benefiting the economy. A report commissioned by the U.S.-China Business Council says the trade war has actually resulted in an estimated peak loss of 245,000 U.S. jobs and that further decoupling between the two countries could lead to even greater job losses. Trump has claimed trade wars are easy to win, so why has this one taken such a severe toll on the U.S. itself. Did the report tell us something we didn't know from the beginning? Joining me for the discussion in Beijing is Matthew Margulies, Vice President of China Operations of the U.S.-China Business Council, which commissioned the report, and from Shanghai, Wang Dan, Chief Economist of Hensang Bank China. Welcome to The Point. So to refresh our memories, according to the Peterson Institute for International Economics, by the end of 2019, the effective tariff on U.S. imports from China stood at 21 percent compared to 3 percent at the beginning of 2018. The effective tariff on Chinese imports from the U.S. stood at almost 21 percent compared with 8 percent at the beginning of 2018. Now from that chart, you see how things have been escalating. It does and look very nice. So, Mr. Margulies, now uh, your council commissioned the research from uh, Oxford Economics, an independent advisory firm, and came up with some significant findings. And one such finding is that rather than benefiting the economy, the trade war has reduced U.S. economic growth and employment, resulting in an estimated peak loss of 245,000 jobs. How did the uh, report come to such conclusion. Mm -hmm. Is it surprising? What do these numbers tell us? Yeah, thanks, Sheen. It's a good question, and thanks for having me. Thank you. You know, so our report primarily does three things. First, it takes a look at U.S. China economic and investment activity over the years and assesses that it has had a positive impact on the U.S. economy and U.S. jobs. The second, uh, the second thing the report does is. It takes a look at U.S.-China economic activity over the last few years and assesses what the impact of trade tensions and tariffs have been on U.S. jobs and U.S. economic activity. The last thing it does is it then takes a look at two future scenarios and two future scenarios of U.S.-China economic relations and assesses um, potentially what either scenario's impact could be to the U.S. economy. You mentioned 245,000 jobs lost. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the, the report points to two numbers, 245,000 jobs lost and potentially 145,000 added. Those tell us two different things. For 245,000 jobs lost, it's looking backwards um, and it's telling us that uh, US the, the impact of tensions and tariffs have had a real impact on U.S. GDP, mm. uh, specifically in the, in the areas of, uh, of impacting competitiveness of American companies um, increased costs, reduced household wealth, um, and delayed investments. And that has, a, a, that has an actual calculatable cost for U.S. GDP. We calculated that at roughly about $108 billion over two years, mm -hmm. right? And if, so we're, if we were to equate that into um, associated costs for U.S. jobs, that, that translates to about 245,000 lost, lost jobs mm -hmm. from the trade war. Mm -hmm. this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, it, was it a surprise? Was it a surprise to you that, you know, that such numbers, such loss came up? Well, to be honest, we, we've been calling, we've said for a number of years that tariffs are not the answer to addressing the uh, trade dispute with China. Um, so we're not surprised that, tr that the job losses from uh, applying tariffs to essentially um, the entire trading relationship with China have had a pretty significant impact. Yeah, another interesting sentence or important sentence mm -hmm. in the report was that the protectionism has actually hurt the U.S. manufacturing sector because one of the primary reasons for this trade war, according to the Trump administration, was that he wants to bring manufacturing back to the United States. So, um, Mr. Margulies, could you elaborate on that, mm -hmm. exactly what do you mean by that? And how about those who actually have lost their jobs because of the so-called China trade shock? Um, are they going to continue to be the losers? Yes, so I would say the U.S. administration has had a number of goals during the trade war, and those goals have not always been in sync with each other, right? Some people have uh, aimed to move manufacturing of U.S. companies back to the United States. Some have aimed to potentially move U.S. supply chains mm -hmm. out of China, but not necessarily back to the United States, but to other markets. Mm -hmm. And then some people have focused on um, kind of systemic issues or structural issues in the Chinese economy and tried to address that through uh, the trade dispute. 
Um, all of those have obviously had varying levels of success, um, but uh, I, I don't know that a Biden administration would necessarily focus on, on those same objectives. Um, so, uh, you know, for the future, what does it mean? Um, I think uh, we might not necessarily see a Biden administration focusing or, uh, on an effort to really reshore U.S. manufacturing, except maybe in a select few areas of, of uh, sensitive sectors, maybe like in pr personal protective equipment, um, in rare earths, or in maybe uh, pharmaceutical ingredients. But by and large, I think the next administration will probably expect um, the, uh, that it's not entirely feasible to move U.S. manufacturing out of China. Well, from the, from the finding of the report, definitely it has very limited success so far. Wang Dan, the report also, I, I believe you, you might have already heard or even read this report. Uh, the report also says a gradual scaling back of tariffs on both sides from average of 18% uh, to 12% would boost growth and lead to an additional 145,000 jobs by 2025. Uh, how credible do you find this uh, assessment and what would that mean for the U.S. economy given the impact of COVID-19? Uh, I think this estimate is a bit too optimistic because once the tariff is done, once the trade war has started, then it's really hard to scale back. Um, because maybe some of the job loss will be permanent. And especially after the pandemic, I think the U.S. lost some momentum to attract those jobs back. And especially for those low-income groups that the trade war was targeting to help, I don't think uh, they can get those, back, uh, those jobs back easily anytime soon. So basically, are you saying that uh, some of the damage would be permanent and that even if there is gradual scaling back of uh, scaling down of the tariffs, the, uh, the benefits would be limited? Yes, absolutely. Um, because for the U.S., the labor market has its own characteristics. Uh, it is strongly protective to those who are in the union. And also in low-income low groups, there are a lot of state subsidies to support them. And for those manufacturing jobs that were lost because of trade with China, they actually are very hard jobs that normally uh, the Americans now wouldn't want to take up. So I just don't see the possibilities of getting any of those jobs back, even if the tariffs are low. Hmm. Mr. Margulies, what is your reaction? Um, have you thought about the nature of the kind of jobs that have been lost and that the numbers could be a bit too optimistic? Yes, yeah, so I, th I think what's important here is the sectors that have been largely damaged by um, a lot of the U.S. tariffs and the reciprocal tariffs from China, right? Uh, the areas that we've seen in our report specifically that were most damaged um, came from the agriculture sector, from energy, um, from manufacturing. Agriculture and energy specifically were addressed in the phase one trade agreement. There are some specific import targets that are um, a part of the agreement that China will fulfill uh, in order to, uh, that China is obligated to fulfill in order to, um, to meet the agreement's requirements. Um, and so obviously those sectors have been hit extremely hard by the tariffs, right? If I'm an agriculture company specifically, um, I think it's pretty straightforward. The tariffs have had a, a pretty damaging effect on U.S. farmers. Uh, U.S. ranchers for the last couple of years. Um, energy as well, right? The tariffs have had a, a pretty damaging effect on um, the price competitiveness of U.S. energy. Mm -hmm. And then lastly on manufacturing, right? They've been actually, U.S. manufacturers have been hit on both sides, right? So uh, a lot of intermediate goods imported from China face tariffs in the U.S. Uh, and then when they are shipped or sold out back to China, um, they are then faced with retaliatory tariffs. So those, those three sectors have been um, hit particularly hard and they uh, will hopefully could see better treatment if well, tariffs are reduced. Yeah. Well, early in, into the, the trade war, uh, we were hearing, of course, complaints from farmers in the U.S. that uh, who, who were losing the market share in China and they were getting some kind of subsidies. And uh, they were told that, you know, it's a short term pain. Things will will be better. And uh, eventually when they win the trade war situation will get better. So, um, Mr. Margulies, how do you look at the kind of losses that the agricultural sector especially has suffered which is estimated to stand something like 71 percent you know because of the the uh, the tariffs and China's tariffs in return are these going to be short-term pains for long-term gains well again it's you know the the tariffs have clearly been damaging for the US agriculture sector 
Um, I think that's why the U.S. administration fought so hard to get some real purchase commitments to try and make up for some of the losses for the agriculture sector in the phase one trade agreement. Um, it's hard to say specifically how many jobs will be recovered or, or what the future impact will be, but um, we're hopeful that uh, you know, the phase one agreement will help to offset some of the damages and that um, a future that doesn't include such high levels of tariffs will benefit both sides. Mm. Mm. Wang Dan, I, I want to ask you this because uh, when we were talking about, the, when we were debating about the trade war, uh, some of the reasons that uh, were being raised by many people, by some people in America has been if China did not retaliate, right, on the tariffs that the U.S. imposed on Chinese, then the losses wouldn't have been there. Mm. And I'm not making this up. I actually really heard people talking about it that way. And, and that was used as a way to justify why the U.S. has to be hard on China has to, you know, really hit China hard. What is your reaction? Uh, I would say that actually the trade war is not about trade. Uh, actually, it's more about the technology decoupling, and we can all see that. So, so far, the trade damage on both sides is quite limited, uh, not just to the U.S. You can see from the report, actually, the people who are uh, affected by the trade war in the U.S. is quite small. And the number of people affected in China are also small because the export sector is about 100 million people in China. It was quite stabilized in the past three years. The lost trade with the U.S. were mostly made up by increased trade in Europe and in ASEAN countries. So if we're looking at other aspects, uh, represented by Huawei, for example, the technological decoupling is real, but the trade damage is not just unreal, but after the pandemic, it's in reverse. Because two, two months after the pandemic spreading in the US, actually China became its number one trading partner again. So basically, the number one priority or target for the trade war, it, it didn't realize. And I don't know if that's intentional, but the harm was just not there in trade. Mr. Margulies, how do you look at the fact that how do you look at the reasons behind exactly the fact that the trade war it did not uh, achieve the, the goals they were designed to achieve? Um, what is the impact of COVID-19 in all of this? Yeah, I, I mean, for a long time, our organization and the U.S. business community has been arguing for a different approach to addressing any challenges in the bilateral relationship, specifically because Challenges have existed, but tariffs have not really been an effective tool. And we, we kind of foresaw ahead of time that tariffs would not be an effective tool at getting uh, substantive changes in, uh, in, the trading or in the economic and trade relationship. Um, and at the end of the day, they have a lot of, have a lot of uh, blowback on American industry. So um, for sure, the motivations behind the trade were, you know, again, there were a lot of different views within the U.S. government about the reasons and the best approaches. And so that's kind of how we got to where we are today. We got a phase one deal that did produce some real substantive results. It didn't fix the entire relationship, but it kind of helped to lay a little bit of a baseline for a bit of time um, in, the, in bilateral ties. But yeah. Um, yeah. But in this report, it's also said that uh, it's time to craft a more nuanced and effective trade policy toward China that will be an essential pillar for managing the world's most important uh, relationship in the coming years. What exactly do you mean by more nuanced and more effective approach? Uh, briefly, please, Mr. Margulies. Yeah, I, I think a relationship that returns us back to the multilateral rules-based system that the U.S. championed and the U.S. helped to develop, right? Those are the principles that the business community has long supported and continues to champion, right? So that's a return to strengthening and updating of the WTO. Um, that's a leadership role in the global trading community. Maybe that's rejoining some global or multilateral trading regimes like the CPTPP. And that's working in concert with allies and like-minded trading partners. When you do have challenges, instead of taking unilateral activity, doing so in concert with others so you don't face unilateral retaliation. Those are the, the principles that we support. All right. We have to leave it there. Many thanks to my two guests, uh, Matthew Margulies, Vice President of China Operations of U.S. China Business Council and Wang Dan, Chief Economist of Hansen Bank China.